so much. Well, the local organisation gives lots of freebies away, but I'm afraid they're not very edible. So um, I know I can't compete with the excellent speakers we've already had so far, but I'll do my best. Seriously, thank you very much for three fascinating um, and really insightful and detailed presentations that I think help to reveal the complexities, the intricacies, the business case and the development case for supply chain and distribution chain action. I thought I'd start by um, giving a small case study on why I'm enthusiastic or perhaps even a little bit passionate about supply chains. Um, but then I'll shift from proselytizing to do some of the challenging that Simon likes us to do. There's a very small case study, quite different to these guys. The 200-bed hotel in uh, the Western Cape in South Africa. Uh, two, uh, sorry, 200 employees, 155 beds, £6 million a year turnover. Tiny. In 2004, Speer decided that supply chain reform was going to be a key strategy for their sustainability overhaul. And they started by profiling their existing supply chain. They set new targets, new deliverables. They transformed their engagement with the, their main suppliers. And they started a new approach called enterprise development procurement, which meant going out and finding small, emerging, perhaps not even quite existing entrepreneurs who could take on new contracts from them. A lot of detail, a lot of work. It's written up elsewhere. I won't bore you with all the work that had to be done to increase their procurement from black-owned enterprises threefold in the next three years, from approximately 14 to 42% of their contractors. But I want to give you some of the results that demonstrate the impact, because we have heard some demonstrations of impact here, but on the whole, we don't have the tangible data that tells us why this approach is so important. And from this small case study, we do. Very quick tangible results. Within one year, seven new enterprises, 39 new jobs. Great. Replication from a first contract of $20,000 to $200,000 of gross contract value within three years. Great. So it's going to increasing. Different business models were demonstrated, innovated and developed that demonstrate how the social value captured by the local community can be so much greater from a bit, bit of innovation. Take the um, contract value of the laundry, which was the first new enterprise to be set up just for year one. Just the number of napkins. Assume that stays the same. The money going into local pockets from that, from the new business model, was four times the value from the old business model. Same number of napkins, same price per napkin. Because of the use of local enterprise, formerly unemployed people, and so on. Um, more than half of the jobs have gone to women and formerly unemployed people. Spin-off, knock-on effects, it's easier to talk about contract value. But there have been real long-term impacts on enterprise development. One of them has become a partner in another black economic-empowered enterprise. They've got increased access to finance. Uh, the laundry expanded on its own last year without any mentoring, any input. These, these impacts are harder to quantify, but they're actually where the long-term answer for development is as enterprises grow and thrive in the future. I'm glad to say the commercial gains to the company are also clear. In this case, there was very clear cost saving, as well as all kinds of benefits with staff, suppliers, and local government. Now, what really excites me, though, because this study is small. It's not really going to the scale that we're talking about today. But it says something about supply chains as an approach from a development perspective. First of all, compared to philanthropy. The gross contract value that was generated within a few years by this hotel which belongs to a family which invests massively in corporate philanthropy. It's one of the biggest proportionate donors in philanthropic investments in the, in the local area. Immediately, within two or three years, the gross contract value was double what could possibly be done through donated in terms of philanthropy from this high, highly philanthropic family. And of course, that amount carries on increasing over time in the way that philanthropy cannot. Think about staff wages, which are normally what's taken as the you know, great impact of a business. The contract value generated through this enterprise development procurement approach was equivalent to a 50% increase in either the number of local staff or the wage levels of local staff, both of which would clearly not be commercially viable for any business. You can't increase your staff bill by 50% for no other change. But you can increase the money going to the local economy by 50% through these linkages. And finally, now here's an interesting one. There was a very small donor input. I see Jack smiling in the audience here because this was originally through a DFID-funded challenge fund. A part-time facilitator was funded with about 
30,000, I'm sorry, all my figures in US dollars, 30,000 US dollars worth of donor input went to funding the facilitator, who was actually crucial to do the legwork of making this happen. But it was a very small input. Within a few years, the contract value being generated is six times that, and by now it will be much more. And in, in this series, we've had a few examples where a small amount of soft loan, or soft, in this case, subsidy, has helped to just break through those transaction costs. And here's one example that actually demonstrates it. So it's a very small case study, but for me, it hits all these knobs, illustrating why supply chains can be so important from a development point of view, as well as a commercial one. But Simon always says, let's... Let's really think about what we're doing and stress test these models. Why, if it's so good, from what I've said, from what these excellent guys have said, isn't it happening more often? Because my sense is that it isn't happening that often. There aren't that many great case studies of companies really developing their supply chain to bring in lo local producers, strengthen the flexibility, durability of their supply chain, and deliver development gain. Maybe there are lots of examples and they're not going to scale. Maybe I'm just ignorant and don't know about them. I don't know. This is part of one of the issues we'd like to explore in the plenary. I think as we explore the future for action on supply and distribution chains, I should say, having done all this, uh, being convinced by the power of supply chains, you then come to look at this little bit of data there is about distribution chains, which tend to deliver about six times as many jobs, according to the few pieces of research that are out there. And you get really excited about distribution chains. So what do we need to think about in, in looking forward at this model? One, I think, is the development impact, because in most cases, we just don't know what it is. So I'm very glad to hear about this, um, this Coca-Cola research. Usually, we only hear about the gross contract value. We don't hear much about the spin-off benefits, the enterprise development, the social, the gender impacts. Very few documented examples. Maybe that's not of so much concern to the business. But in fact, if we're engaging this as a partnership between the business and the development community, we do need to understand that better. We also know that where supply chains are actually where businesses can make a lot of money by squeezing the margins on their suppliers. Now, how do we reconcile what we're looking at on the one hand about good action through the supply chain, and on the other hand, knowing that that's where some real development problems can arise? Do we have two separate conversations, or do we need to start about how these two conversations come together? We also know that some initiatives that are to improve the supply chain, well, they have losers as well. And there are debates raging out there about standards, certification, fair trade, and so on. The global gap uh, agricultural standard, you know, that has excluded producers in Kenya. Okay, it's, so there have been winners as well. But we do need to be quite frank and realistic looking at the winners and the losers in this if we are going to actually improve delivery. Secondly, on commercial gain, uh, again, I think it's great. I've used this SAB graph again and again because it's something that actually plots differential commercial return. Most businesses just say, yes, there's a great commercial return. It's strengthening our supply chain. But there's not an awful lot of public information really trying to assess that commercial gain. But if we don't assess that strongly enough, well, what's going to happen? Are businesses going to scale? Um, a few are, but are others? Is it because the business case has not been sufficiently explored? Is it too weak? Is it just not, not being assessed? I don't know. I think we do need to understand the commercial, the business case in more detail. And how the business case for doing better things through the supply chain can be balanced against the very obvious commercial pressure to cut costs and increase margins, which also clearly exists. Third issue to explore is the internal costs. Our speakers have really conveyed today some of the nitty gritty detail involved in doing this. There is no doubt it takes an enormous lot, amount of work and effort. It might not be that, much, that, that expensive in terms of actual dollars or pounds that you have to throw at it, but it's hard work. My guess is that that is a major constraint. The development gain is there, the commercial gain is there in the long term, but getting over that hump is a big issue. Let's get those issues out into the open more and see if there's any way those transaction costs can be reduced. Is it an area where the development community can help more? We did hear the, how important the partnerships were. Uh, I think that's an area for exploration. Fourth issue we didn't hear so much about today is the intermediaries and the southern companies. There's been some recent research coming up, some coming out by Oxfam next month, uh, other things in the agricultural sector, the monitor report. 
intermediaries are coming up again and again as an area where innovation is happening. Southern companies in some ways are leading the way in developing supply chain business models that really work for the poor. And some arguing that actually the southern companies are better at this than the multinationals. And the multinationals are they going to squash this innovation by having more codified, certified, standardized approaches, which they are easier for them given the scale they're operating at? Or can the multinationals find ways to harness and draw upon that innovation by contracting with these southern suppliers in a way that leaves open more flexibility and innovation? I think that's an interesting issue that's coming up. And the final issue that we need to think about is the impact of the global economic crisis. That's obviously increasing pressure to put pressure on the supply chain to cut costs. What can the multinationals do to limit that pressure? Are they interested in limiting that pressure? Does it make any sense to try and limit that pressure? How does that conflict with the great, the valiant efforts that are going on through supply chains? I know that ASDA have said publicly that they will not pass on uh, pressure on banana prices to the producers of bananas. They're taking the hit. Well, that's fine, but as they said to me on the phone, we don't know what competitors are doing. As I said to them, we don't know what's happening in other products. That's great as far as bananas go. But clearly across the, the realm of supply chains that are going on between the south and the north, there is a lot of pressure happening down there. And how is that going to affect the development impact of the supply chains? So I remain very enthusiastic and passionate. I believe supply and distribution chains are a critical channel, a lever of core business to generate development impact in a commercially friendly way. But I think we've got a bit more exploration to do. Thanks. <laughs>